Magkailan tanghali po sa lahat ng nanonood at uh, kanilang mga television uh, sets at mga nakikinig sa radyo. Uh, pinatawag po namin ang uh, press conference nito para masagot ang maraming katanungan na may kinadaman sa uh, proclamation na in-issue ng Presidente na sa pagbaliwala ng uh, amnesty proclamation in so far as Senator Kilianis is concerned. So, uh, we are here to answer questions from the media. So, uh, may we have the first question, please? Um, excuse me, can you just identify uh, yourself? Yeah, please identify yourself before and you And the next word for it. Uh, right, please. thank you. Yes, I, I say, Sir Anjali Mar from CNN Philippines. So, you're Anjali. Okay. All right. Sir, can you walk us through the process? What went behind this proclamation? Kailan to nag-start, sir, yung process of the... All right. Uh, and why now? Yeah, we, we are uh, talking about proclamation number 572. Signed by the President uh, on August uh, 31, 2018. Just a couple of days before he departed with uh, many members of the cabinet for uh, Israel and uh, Jordan. All right, this was also attested by uh, Executive Secretary Michel Deya. And uh, I was informed about it uh, on the day of the departure of uh, the president, uh, verbally at least. And uh, I got a hard copy of the proclamation, a certified copy, only yesterday. I understand that uh, the proclamation was published in a newspaper of uh, general circulation uh, today, this morning. So I am not, I do not have any personal knowledge as to when the review of uh, the amnesty given to uh, Senator uh, Filianes actually began. But what I know is that uh, this matter of review has been there for quite some time. It's not as if uh, this happened only uh, five days ago or uh, uh, nothing of that sort. I think this has been uh, being discussed. Uh, couple of years ago, as far back as 2013, I guess. Uh, but it just so happened that uh, now, uh, it was only recently that the proclamation was uh, uh, issued by the President. Take note that the title of the proclamation is Revocation of DND Ad Hoc Committee Resolution Number 2, dated January 31, 2011, in so far as it granted amnesty to former uh, LPSG uh, Antonio Trillanes the fourth. All right. So uh, while the title indicates that it's a revocation, the contents of the proclamation, if you have read uh, a copy of that proclamation, would show that it actually nullified or declared void ab initio. All right. The issuance of the amnesty to uh, uh, Senator Trillanes, as if it never existed, never been valid for non-compliance with certain mandatory requirements for the availment of that amnesty. So, binali wala ito as if it never existed. It's not, you know, something that was given and being taken back, all right? It's a declaration that it was void from the moment that it was issued. Sir, Next but, question. But what makes it, email for me, Nancy, ABS, yes, yeah. news. Sir, what makes it different from the amnesty granted to the other Magdala officers? basically entirely the same on um, circumstances well uh the proclamation speaks of certain non-compliance on the part of senator trillanes with requirements for the grant of the amnesty you will take note that uh, there is a there is mention of proclamation number 75 series of 2010 so that is the general proclamation of amnesty to those who were involved in the uh awkward mutiny Manila Peninsula uh, siege and uh, marine standoff no, on various dates, several dates yon. But uh, to be able to implement that grant of uh, amnesty, merong kinreate yung proclamation na yon, na ad hoc committee sa Department of National Defense uh, to accept yung applications, the individual applications for amnesty. So may mga basic requirements. Two of the most notable requirements, and this is uh, apparently uh, were not complied by Senator, uh, Senator uh, Trillanes. Ay yung formal 
pag-fill up first in person under oath of an official application for amnesty. And the other major requirement is that he should have admitted fault, all right, or guilt doon sa mga charges uh, na filed against him. There must be an express admission of guilt, all right, before uh, uh, you can be eligible for amnesty. All right, so apparently based on the review undertaken, I hindi siya na-comply dito. As a matter of fact, there are allegations that uh, to the uh, that to the media he said na he parang uh, he he does not admit any guilt uh, of the offenses charged. No? Take note that for purposes of amnesty, we are talking about high crimes, political crimes such as uh, rebellion, sedition, mutiny, coup d'état, and he was in fact charged with coup d'état in a regular court of law. Yes, please. Uh, please identify yourself. Uh, for now, the proclamation only covers him. No? But uh, I, I believe that uh, maybe others who might be similarly situated are also, your uh, financial applications might have, uh, are also being reviewed. Not too sure about that, but I suppose that uh, since there is a review ongoing, uh, it might include not only uh, Senator Trillanes, but also the others. Sir, Jeff, the Miko, Manila Police. Hi, Jeff. Sir, may nang-interview niya ata si Trillanes kanina. Para nang sabi niya, meron daw siyang certificate. So, ibig sabihin, nabigyan siya ng amnesty. Wala siyang parang nag-comply siya sa mga requirements. Well, uh... Let him just uh, show it. No? Uh, what we're saying is the requirement of an application under oath does not exist in the records and that there are no records either of his any of admission of guilt on his part no? for the charges in filed against him. Sir Lian Guan of Rappler, sir. sir, does the proclamation have an effect of a warrant or kailangan pong mag-apply ng DOJ ng warrant of arrest sa isang court? Uh, by itself, no, uh, the proclamation directs uh, the Department of Justice as well as the armed forces of the Philippines no, to take the necessary uh, action in order to uh, continue the proceedings. Why AFP? Because apart from the criminal complaint for coup d'etat pending with the Makati Regional Trial Court, at the time of the issuance of the uh, amnesty or of the proclamation uh, granting the amnesty, I meron din uh, court martial proceedings uh, ongoing uh, before the Department of National Defense or Armed Forces uh, uh, on the matter of uh, the mutiny, conduct and becoming of an officer and so forth and so on. Uh, so, meron din parallel proceedings happening before the armed forces of the Philippines. Kaya, meron din directly addressed to the EFP to continue the proceedings against the Nathalie So, um, that, that will probably entail the issuance of more detailed orders, no? like uh, on the part of the prosecution, we will probably have to uh, reopen the case uh, that was filed before the RDC. So, he cannot be arrested now without a warrant? Uh, the, 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 the proclamation has directed uh, all enforcement agencies to apprehend him. So uh, he will be placed in custody. Uh, as to where that will be, that is a matter that uh, we need to await a uh, little. And uh, maybe for now, uh, if he's uh, attending sessions at the Senate, the Senate can probably uh, you know, put him under his custody in the meantime. The issue on legislative immunity does not rise in this case. Eh? It's not applicable. You know, there is a provision under the Constitution that provides the, uh, or gives uh, members of Congress the privilege of not being arrested while Congress is in session. But take note that that will apply only if the offense charge is punishable by an imprisonment of uh, not more than six years. So yun lang ang applicable the privilege na yun. If the offense carries a penalty not exceeding six years. But could it not carries the penalty of life imprisonment? And for that reason, it's not legal.
Joseph said. Yes, Joseph. So who conducted the review? Uh, I am not sure who exactly conducted the review, but I suppose uh, this might have been uh, uh, studied uh, in the past by the Office of the Solicitor General. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, okay. Um, does this have to satisfy the two requirements, the application and the admission review, to be qualified for an but you mean that uh, he will redo the whole thing? No, no, sir. You no. use the status no. that, that, at that time. At, at that time, yes, if he sir. complied with those requirements, would he have been entitled? I guess the answer to that question is a definite yes. Because, sir, if he, you know, if he was given amnesty, notwithstanding that uh, the requirements were not, uh, you know, strictly met, with more reason that that amnesty would have given to him if such requirements were, were actually. So you can see in 2011, we had a report in a video uh, showing that he did apply, at least the first, uh, first uh, requirement that he applied for an amnesty. Then, okay, then let him show it. But uh, that is really beside the point because there is this more important requirement of admitting one's fault you know, before one can be entitled to an amnesty. You must first admit your guilt for rebellion, sedition, or coup d'etat, as the case may be. Now, show proof that he actually, uh, you know, admitted guilt for such offense. Without that, sir, valid yung 572, no? Without that na proof na that he did uh, admit to the crime, valid yung 572. That's, that's uh, what the proclamation says, no? And, uh, upon review, and these basic requirements, mandatory requirements, were not met. That was the basis for a declaration by the president that uh, uh, amnesty granted to him at that time was actually void of the nation. So why only specific to Senator Trillian? I am not saying that it's specific only to him. As a matter of fact, I said earlier that I have reasons to believe that uh, maybe people similarly situa situated like uh, as uh, uh, Senator Trillian, you know, uh, their, uh, the grant of amnesty to them might also be under you talked about reopening the case um, on the part of the Department of Justice, which was prosecuted this case before the Makati RTC, if I'm not mistaken. So from here on, um, what are we looking at, sir? Um, how are we going to do about it, um, that reopening? It, and because the revocation so far only pertains to him, does that also mean that, that if we reopen that particular case, it will only apply? Uh, first, we have to check our records first, okay, because that uh, case was uh, filed and prosecuted way back in uh, 2003. All right, so 15 years ago, and uh, we really have to look at the records of the case uh, if, uh, you know, the proceedings were merely suspended or if there was an order of dismissal and stuff like that. So we need, we need to find that out first. Uh, maybe, uh, <laughs> all right, uh, Prosecutor General OIC Padulion may be able to answer the question. Yes, my is concerned. He was the first of all. So or what? Sorry. The decision was about to be propagated way back in 2010. Uh, however, uh, the decision was about to be propagated in 2010. However, because of the manifestation of uh, defense, and there was an amnesty. Now, as far as our records, the records that we've seen so far, there are among the accused who were actually, uh, there, were there was a decision which was rendered by an acting presiding judge who took over Judge Pimentel. And uh, she approved the uh, she approved the amnesty which was granted to some of the accused. But when I looked at the records, it did not include Senator Turianis. So we're still in the process of looking at all other decisions of Regional Trial Court Branch 148 as to other decisions that may have been rendered as far as the other accused are concerned. So the applications were presented to the court 
pala, sir. No, manifestations, manifestations were filed with the court saying that the accused who had filed or availed of amnesty had complied with the requirements. These were filed by their respective counsel. So, on the basis of that, the acting presiding judge at that time approved the said, uh, approved the said uh, applications. And it did not include As far as the order that I have reviewed so far this morning, it did not include the name of Senator Tagliannes. But again, we're having our uh, prosecutors in Makati check with Regional Trial Court Branch 148, check with the records to find out uh, if there were other orders or decisions that were rendered pursuant to approving the uh, amnesty of life. It was what up for promulgation of the <coughs> In this case, it was already up for, the, the, the prosecution and defense were already completed and it was already up for promulgation. Yes, the decision, uh, the, the case was already submitted for decision. In fact, uh, if I recall, Judge Pimentel already came out, scheduled it for promulgation, and he had with him a copy of the decision. He was just about to read the promulgate the decision when uh, there was a manifestation from the defense counsel stating that there was amnesty that was supposed to be granted to all of the accused. Sir? Sir, can I say something about application of Lannis RTC? Kasi there are, if you look, if you look at the case, there are about 31. There are about 31 accused in this case. Now, if all of them availed of uh, amnesty, then naturally there would have to be a manifestation to the court informing the court that they had complied with all the requirements. Apparently, not all of them were represented by one counsel. So, depending on who filed the manifestation, the orders would come out. Now, what I'm saying is that based on what I have checked so far, it did not include the name of Senator Tenyakis. So, wala application? Well, not in that order. It would appear that in that particular order, it would appear that as far as Senator Tenyakis is concerned, wala pang approval. So, we're checking other orders in the court. If magubuhay ulit yung kaso, sir, ibig sabihin, desisyon na lang yung kulang. Judge Pimentel, ang dato ba, sir? Wala na po. Judge Pimentel retired already in 2010. Okay, so... Uh, there's another judge, Judge Soriano, if I'm not mistaken, who is the acting presiding judge of RTC Branch 148. And you are correct, if the case will be reopened, it is only for the purposes of one, asking for the issuance of an alias warrant of arrest, and second, for asking the court to promulgate the decision, considering that the court had already previously acquired jurisdiction over the person of the accused. Okay, sir, uh, do you need to apply for a warrant? Or AFP. Right. Uh, after the proper review of the records of this case, and uh, we have determined that this uh, is something that is right for reopening, right? That there are grounds to reopen the case. Then, first order of the day would be uh, simply to ask the court for the issuance of an alias form so that uh, the person of the accused will be brought into custody of the court. Sir, how soon yet? We'll do it as soon as we can, uh, as soon as we find all the records pertaining to this case. Uh, and you will please note that this happened. This case uh, uh, happened uh, 15 years ago, so we'll just have to look into archives, archives and other. Well, uh, that's a matter for the Senate to discuss. No, I think the issue there is on the matter of custody in the meantime. All right, but as I have explained, the matter of uh, privilege from arrest while Congress is in session, which it is right now. Uh, does not apply if the offense charge is punishable by more than six years. As in this case, because he's excluded now. Sir, should the AFP and PNP arrest him now? I'm sorry? Should the PNP and the AFP arrest There is a directive coming from the President himself as Commander-in-Chief, and I guess uh, it's something that has to be obeyed. Obeyed? Obeyed, right. Sir, it's not possible to do what Senator Dilipa 
magkaiba yata yung situation, no? uh, yung case Senator De Lima uh, I charges for uh, regular uh, criminal offense. No? But this one is amnesty uh, being set aside. And of course, uh, nandun yung uh, charge naman ng uh, coup d'etat, no? violation of the law on coup d'etat. So, so uh, I cannot really say whether uh, the two cases are you know squarely uh, uh, on the same footing. Can yes, sir. Sir, Dexter Post, Hi, uh, You mentioned that you were ng September 2 bago siya umalis ng Israel. Okay. Ano po yung direct utos niya po sa inyo regarding this case? No, it was only the executive secretary who gave notice to me about the proclamation that had been signed by the president a couple of days before their departure date. And uh, so, being the uh, designated officer in charge, I guess uh, it was his duty really uh, to inform me about this very important proclamation. Being the OIC of the Office of the President, ano po ang utos niyo po ngayong araw? Well, uh, it's simply uh, for uh, the concerned agencies to implement what the President has directed. In Section 2 of the proclamation, he made uh, two specific directives, and that one is addressed to the, the Department of Justice and to the Armed Forces to uh, continue with the proceedings that were suspended, uh, if at all suspended, uh, at the time that the amnesty was uh, granted to Senator Trigiano. And also uh, another directive, this time addressed to law enforcement agencies to cause the apprehension of Senator Trigiano so that they might be brought uh, into custody. My timeline po ba kayo binigay sa PNP or AFP for the arrest of... Uh, no specific timeline but this is in effect and uh, as soon as it is uh, uh, feasible to do it, then so be it. Sir, Sir, Court CIT. Marshal, Sir, if at all suspended, mm -hmm. will then proceed. And then second, the prosecution before Makati 148 um, will also proceed. But Sir, since Judge Pimentel already resigned, and there's a new presiding judge, mm -hmm. what will happen to the decision written by Pimentel? It will not be the one that will be understood. It will be an entirely new appreciation by the presiding judge, Sir. It will not be the same because the decision that is there may be the <laughs> Okay, and so uh, um, uh, your passing decision about to be promulgated uh, apparently pertains to all of the accused. No, so uh, uh, itong development na ito is something that pertains only to Senator Trillanes, then probably there might be some need to review your uh, decision that has been prepared before but not promulgated. But based on the proceedings, talang, sir, there will not be a, a new trial, sir, para review na lang on the proceedings as to the alleged participation. In my opinion, since a full-blown trial, assuming that a full-blown trial has already been conducted, then I guess uh, there will be no need to repeat. Uh, all of these uh, are made uh, of record by uh, our courts, which are courts of uh, record. And so any uh, judge who will take over and promulgate the judgment need only go through uh, the transcripts, the pleadings, the case files, and so forth and so on. We don't need to conduct any trial altogether. Sir, because I mean CIDG personnel in the Senate, so they can already affect the order. Uh, they can actually, <laughs> and the, uh, I think Senator Trigliano says uh, he's ready, he's ready, so, uh, sir, sir, so be it, alright? Sir, I mean, who from Slaughter? Yes. As long sir, uh, people are quite surprised with this development because uh, is there such a uh, jurisprudence uh, when, when it comes to revocation of amnesty? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, as I said, this is not a matter of revocation. When you say you revoke, uh, there is something that was actually given validly and you are taking it back for some reasons. But that does not seem to be the case here. This proclamation declares that the grant was invalid and void ad initio, right from the beginning. So you're not taking back something. You are declaring that something never actually validly existed. Sir, Lawrence, ano ako Raji Sir, here. Rod yes, Radio Pilipinas Sir Lawrence Tano. First ever na makapag-complete si Senator Trillanes ng mga requirements. Uh, pwede bang ibigay ulit sa kanya ang amnesty? Or magbigay um, ng bago ang amnesty? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's a different matter altogether, you know. Uh, we're talking about executive clemency 
and that pertains to the person who is the chief executive at the time that uh, the application will be granted. No? So he'll be dealing with uh, President Duterte this time if he applies, assuming that he will be willing to do that. So, syempre, sir, perception it, sir, hinahabol yung kalaban, di ba, sir, ng Pangulo. Sir, yun yung magiging ano, political persecution. That would be the line, definitely. Uh, well, we cannot really prevent people or uh, senators or Yenes from thinking that way. But from the point of view of government, if there is something that needs to be done, then it should be done regardless of the timing. Especially if an act is uh, uh, deemed void from the beginning, we're not talking about any prescriptive period here. The government is not uh, stopped by a mistake that was uh, done by its own officers. And a matter that uh, is void or uh, an act which is void from the beginning uh, can be challenged and attacked at any time, no matter the amount of time it has announced. So what prompted the review of what's you <laughs> I can't really answer that, you know. Uh, but I guess this is really a matter of making sure that uh, uh, all necessary legal requirements in so far as uh, important matters like this have been complied with. Now, as to what other reasons uh, there might have been, I'm not really to that. I'm sorry to say. So, really, you said, sir, you assumed, di ba, sir, na baka meron ding review doon sa iba. Mm -hmm. Except, sir, take <coughs> picture, the others were granted amnesty, the Mughal officers, some of them are supporters of the president, mm -hmm. di ba, sir? So, but to your knowledge, sir, um, wala kang specific knowledge na meron ng ongoing, parang you're just No, I have no personal knowledge. I don't have any specific knowledge that uh, such a review covering other people. Mm -hmm. Uh, is ongoing, but I just surmise that uh, in as much as something like this was reopened, then uh, probably the same thing is also being done in so far as people who are similarly situated are concerned. Sir Daniel Kompi. Yes, Senator. Sir, sa kaliman, sa kung iko po ng siya Senator Villas. Well, the proclamation says uh, he will be committed to where he was before, at the time that the amnesty was granted. You know, so wherever he may be. If he was at the Makati City Jail at the time, then uh, if the case is reopened and a warrant, the uh, English warrant is issued against him, then he goes there. If he was uh, under detention uh, within the premises of the armed forces because of the martial law proceedings then ongoing, then he would be uh, restored or uh, detained in, in the same uh, location. Sir? It all depends on where he was at the time that the uh, amnesty was issued. So you're all waiting for an alias warrant. Pwede bang sa Senate muna siya? That's what I said. No, uh, Maybe that's the reason why Senator uh, uh, Tito Soto was, uh, would like to discuss this with, with the rest of his colleagues. We believe that's a fair and reasonable arrangement in the meantime that the prosecution, uh, the DOJ, and the armed forces are still you know, reviewing their records. Uh, but there's already a directive to put him under custody, so I guess uh, that's the best possible arrangement in the meantime. So the but he's not immune from arrest, as I would like to emphasize, all right? So that's just for convenience. So the custody being spoken of in the proclamation is in terms of immediate custody, but since subsequently you'll be, fa you'll be applying for the issuance of an alias warrant, then there has to be a return of the warrant, and therefore we will follow the same procedure that the court will now determine where via commitment order shall yes, be detained. Yes, uh, very true. Uh, once the court acquires jurisdiction over the person of the accused, then his place of detention will also be uh, uh, determined by the court, which is part of this section. Sir, I'm request na po ba DOJ doing this one? Sa... Di pa, kasi nga yung mga records, uh, pa namin yan eh. Uh, 2003 case pa. And uh, we got this uh, proclamation only yesterday. So we need to take a look at the records. So sir, it's now found na mayroon nang hindi na na-comply na requirements sa Senator Trilliani. So can we say na yung grant sa kanyo by the previous administration was irregular? Void nga eh. not only irregular but void. No? So I cannot really answer for those uh, for the people who granted the uh, amnesty at that time. Remember that there was an ad hoc <laughs> committee under Proclamation Number no. 75 during the time of President Toyo Aquino, uh, who, uh, which created this uh, ad hoc committee uh, for the grant of amnesty to uh, those involved in the mutiny in the uh, uh, Oakwood, yeah, the Oakwood mutiny and uh, the other incidents, no. And uh, it was, uh, I think, the approval of the applications for amnesty at the time 
was uh, given by uh, the DMD secretary at that time, the uh, secretary Walter Jasmine. All right, as mentioned in the proclamation. So, uh, well, if there was non-compliance with some requirements, but uh, nonetheless, uh, amnesty was granted. I think it would be for Senator, uh, I mean, uh, Secretary uh, Voltaire, to explain that. No? Uh, it's up for us to, you know, to dwell into that matter because that happened uh, many years ago. Going back to the requirements, no, he has to satisfy both. Or just one. Yeah, both, both. Uh, because I guess, now I have not seen the form, but I suppose that that form would contain a section where he would uh, uh, expressly admit that uh, he's guilty of uh, the offense charge. No? Because I would surmise that kasama yun. Because that form, application form, is under oath. All right? So uh, such an important requirement like admission of guilt is something that should be contained in that form under oath. So uh, to me, that is the more important uh, requirement rather than the form. All right? It's the admission of guilt and that you are pleading for executive clemency. But no. the answer, even if he can prove that he did apply in 2011, but there is no admission. Wala rin yeah, that would seem to be the case. The uh, ang, ang problem here is that there is a certain media statement si uh, Senator Julianes na parang sinasabi niya na dinidisclaim niya uh, expressly uh, yung kanyang guilt for any wrongdoing and that uh, apparently according to the uh, proclamation uh, hindi yan dapat na sinacharge sa kanya but something else you know? kung ano yung something else na yun hindi niya sinabi pero uh, apparently based on the proclamation again ay uh, meron siya mga statements to the media before na sinasabi niya na hindi ito ang charges to which I will be guilty. Something to that effect. Sir, walang attachment ng admission of guilt dun sa application? Or affidavit I, of, uh, of affidavit admission? Affidavit might be in the form of an affidavit, alright? At the oath, attached to the form, yeah. or incorporated in the form form. itself. As long as under oath, sec no? Yes, so yun ang mahalaga dun eh. For something like that, it's got to be under oath. Sir, this was his interview in 2011, quote, We admit guilt as far as rising up against the most corrupt president, referring to who, you know, who this country has ever had proudly. Does this admit, does this qualify as an admission to the crime? The ch crime charge is coup d'etat. All right, so uh, there must be an express admission of guilt to the offense of coup d'etat. So we mention of coup d'etat. Yes, of course. Not just the mere uprising against the most. Yes, because the elements may be different. Right. Sir, for those who are saying that there will, this will create a chilling effect, um, not only to the opposition, but those more regular people who may be opposed in this administration, that they can no longer pala verbalize their opposition and then things like this happen. What is the message coming from no, the It's not a question of uh, political opposition. It's a matter of compliance with the law. All right, this is a matter which is provided in the Constitution itself. When the executive, uh, chief executive grants uh, clemency, all right, all the requirements must be naturally complied with. So we're just following the rule of law here. If something was not uh, followed before, then uh, the government is not barred from making the proper re rectification to <coughs> such a mistake. So that's how we view these matters. And this may happen again in the future, not you know, not to scare anyone, but just to ensure that all the laws are followed and obeyed. Okay. Sir, Tari, can you comment? This is the third decision now na uh, nakalagay abdication from the beginning. First is Sereno, second is the Dante Resorts with the and the third is no. no, it just so happened that all of these matters um, seem to be invalid right from the beginning. It's not a fact. I'm telling you, it's not a fact. It just so happened that all of these events, you know, these acts happen to be declared up after a serious review as void from a legal standpoint. <clears throat> Sir, walang pattern yun. Uh, ano lang yun? Uh, Nakakataon lang yun. Sir, can this be, uh, can Senator Teriyani seek relief from the court and can this issue be subject of judicial review? It's up to him. It's up to him. I will not teach him what to do. His lawyers are more, you know, 
are very capable of uh, thinking what the legal remedies are available. Secretary, clarification lang. If he can prove na from the very start meron naman talaga siyang requirement, can the amnesty be restored without him having to apply to the territory for... Again. Again. Let's cross the bridge when we get there. But the repositories of all these documents are saying, sir, that they do not exist. That's what the DND says. They have no records of such an official, official application. So if... Uh, Baka missing lang, sir. Sorry? Missing lang. Well, we don't know. Uh, we presume that uh, uh, duties are regularly performed, not only in the civil government, but also in the military organizations. So itong declaration uh, of the so where can he... Challenge it. <laughs> as right I now. said, it's, it's, it's up to him. Supreme Court, I, right? I will not, uh, I will not, uh, I mean, as a matter of fact, you know? <laughs> <laughs> as a matter of fact, oh, sir, case of first impression. Uh, Supreme Court, sir. Supreme. Uh, procedure, question, procedure. Oh, well, I guess, uh, this is, you know, any act on the part of uh, government is subject to judicial review. Uh, to determine whether there has been grave abuse of discretion. So that's in the Constitution. So, uh, so be it. So, uh, pick it up from there. Judicial review by... Uh, judicial review in general. So, uh, depending on the hierarchy of courts, no, kung saan nila tingin na proper, depending on the importance of the, of the issue, then they, should, they would have to decide where to go. But the first venue for him, I think, is the Office of the President, sir, for exhaustion of remedies, sir. He has to... No, this is not an administrative case, so all right? This is a matter of uh, executive prerogative. This is uh, executive uh, clemency that we're talking about. This is an act of grace, all right? So we're not talking about a simple administrative case where you have to exhaust administrative remedies before you go to courts. All right, so this pertains to something that is purely personal to the president because it, it involves his discretion. All right, in the case of amnesty, of course, that's subject to concurrence by uh, majority vote of the Congress. All right, in the case of amnesty. Amnesty? Yes, exactly. I'm saying executive clemency in general is a matter of grace on the part of the president. But with respect to amnesty, which involves political crimes, all right, the concurrence of a majority of Congress is a requirement. This one it doesn't need There was an issue I remember so that before it was presented to Congress, there was no admission of guilt, even way back. There was an issue raised. Oh, no admission of guilt. So. Yes, because before you present it to Congress, all the requirements have to be complied. Okay. With okay. So this one does not need the concurrence of Congress. No? Amnesty requires okay, okay. Uh -oh, congressional concurrence. But void, but void, sir. Void, 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 yeah, void. but you know, what will Congress concur to? If it if in the beginning, it was invalid. Sir, okay. has there been an amnesty before in a void, declared a void ab I'm sorry, again? Has there been an amnesty before that was declared ab initio? Or is this really the first? I uh, do not recall of any that has happened in the past, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, we're talking about uh, uh, decades of uh, executive clemency. Uh, there might have been, but uh, I don't recall any where uh, an amnesty given was uh, set aside for being uh, void. void so since this was presented to Congress, sir, this does not cure whatever it is, okay? That is a legal issue that, it is. uh, it's a legal issue that perhaps uh, will have to be resolved in due time. Sir, uh, clarification of, uh, Christine Patel from Pilsner. Sir, clarification of what the review was done by Office of the Solicitor General. Is this under uh, Solgen Kalita or the 2013 from the previous Solgen Sapo? Uh, I don't have uh, personal knowledge exactly as to who initiated the review and the uh, exact time where it was commenced. No? But what I know is that uh, this is something that did not happen last week or a month ago, but it's something that is uh, in the pipeline uh, for quite some time. I'm talking about maybe a couple of years back. But under the uh, under the Duterte. <laughs> under the Duterte admin. I can't say. I'm not sure. Because I don't have personal Okay, knowledge. so you're not sure if it's the OSG or if it's just the legal staff of the palace. Parang there, sir, medyo hindi pa clear sa'yo in the not, palace. Not clear exactly because, okay. uh, you know, I just got I just got a copy of this proclamation uh, yesterday. And I did not have an opportunity to trace it back. Uh, how did it start? Who commenced it? By uh, For what reason? 
uh, uh, those details I do not have personal knowledge of. Sir, which agency made the parang final recommendation to the President na ito yung result ng review namin? The Office of the President din mismo ang ibigay ng go signal doon, no? because it has to be signed by the President. Then I suppose uh, uh, before it gets signed by uh, the President, it would have to be reviewed by the lawyers at the office of the President. Categorically, we can't say right now, sir, kung OSG pa to or under um, Malacanang solely, so wala pa tayong ganun. I, I would say that uh, probably uh, both uh, OSG lawyers and Malacanang lawyers have reviewed this matter no? because this is a matter that pertains to the Chief Executive. <coughs> So, uh, the sergeant would necessarily be uh, consulted or uh, involved, as well as lawyers working at the, uh, at the office of the president, where I used to, uh, to be or work. Sir? Right? Sir? Sir, Tej, Yes, Tej. Sir, sabi ni Congressman Alihano, uh, susunod na daw siya, sir. May other pa ba kayong nire-review, sir? <laughs> I, I don't know about that. But, uh, really, I don't know about that. <laughs> Any further questions, uh, gentlemen? Please. Uh, sir. Uh, sir. Uh, okay. I have submitted the report of uh, the DOJ in consultation with the Office of the Government Corporate Council to the President. And there uh, are recommendations in that uh, report. Uh, the evaluation report by the DOJ on the validity of the Lion Filipino uh, consumption with landing. No? So, uh, many recommendations, but uh, I, can, I understand that the President was unable to approve the recommendations uh, before he left for Israel and Jordan. So, uh, uh, I beg your indulgence that I cannot uh, disclose further details or uh, conclusions and findings and uh, more so the recommendations until they have been actually approved by the president. When he, re when he returns and he approves the recommendations, then probably we can call another uh, briefing like this, if uh, please. All right, so if there are no further Thank questions. Thank you so much, right? sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you, sir. Uh,